If you are working with SIM 800L GSM modules and you encountered some problems, don't worry, we've got you covered. In this video, we'll explore various factors which could affect the working of this SIM 800L module. We'll try to come up with a solution and get it up and running smoothly. So without wasting any time, let's dive straight into it. Before we begin troubleshooting, it's essential to understand some basics about the SIM 800L module. So your GSM 800 module will look something like this. The top you have slot for UFL connector based antenna which looks something like this. If you have this you can connect it. For this tutorial I'll connect the antenna which comes with this module by default. It looks like this and we need to connect and solder it similar to what we have here. The module has a lot of other pins too which we will talk about soon. This LED right here is a network status indicator and this is our main GSM chip. Now let's understand a few more pins like the VCC and the ground. The VCC is the power input pin of the module and its input voltage range is from 3.4V to 4.4V and the GND is the ground pin. The next part is selecting a proper power supply. I created a tiny circuit for this which you can see here. A stable power supply is crucial for the SIM 800L's proper functioning. Now we know that the input range of the SIM module is from 3.4V to 4.4V which is kind of annoying as we usually use 3.3V and 5V devices. To reach this voltage level, you may need to either employ a buck converter for stable power or use a 3.7 volt battery. Some people have also recommended a capacitor between VCC and ground, but for me there was no need as my project is working fine even without it. I personally will recommend a buck converter power supply as we can change the voltage values freely if the module is not working. Let's keep it at 4 volt for now. Let's dive into the interfacing section next. If you are using this GSM module, chances are that you will be interfacing it with a microcontroller like an Arduino, for which we will be using this RX and TX pins to send and receive data. Remember that at the Arduino side we are using software serial. So it will be pin 3 and pin 2 for TX and RX respectively. Arduino's RX pin will be connected to modules TX pin and vice versa. Easy right? Right? No. You see, the GSM module operating voltage is 3.3 volt. But the microcontroller Arduino which we are using operates internally on 5V. So the 3.3V signal coming from the GSM module to the Arduino can be handled by Arduino as it is lower than its 5V operating voltage. But when we send the signal from the Arduino to the module, we need to be careful and use a voltage divider to lower the 5V voltage to 3.3V or else you can damage your GSM module completely. Now I would like to be a bit honest here that if you might have used any other microcontroller like the ESP or Raspberry Pi which has a 3.3V operating range similar to a GSM module, we would have completed this smoothly. But I chose Arduino because it is mostly used by beginners and commonly found. Here's the complete interfacing diagram for this circuit which I have created here. Now let's connect the microcontroller with the module. While creating this circuit, I made a mistake and initially forgot to connect the Arduino's ground with the circuits, which caused it to not work. But I later on added it and it was working smoothly. When that's done, let's address some SIM card and network related problems. First, let's insert our SIM inside this module. This is the orientation. Remember, SIM 800L is made to work with 2G SIM cards. Make sure your SIM card is compatible with this module. So remember the network status indicator LED we talked about earlier? This LED will blink at different rates depending upon the network state. If the LED is blinking fast, meaning blinking once every second, it means that the chip is running but it hasn't made a connection to the cellular network yet. If the LED is blinking a bit slow, giving a blink every 2 seconds, it means that the GPRS data connection is active and you can now connect to the internet. So what we are aiming to achieve is one blink every 3 seconds so we can make a call or an SMS. If you are not getting this result, do this. First, check if the SIM card is inserted properly. Second, increase the voltage of the buck converter but do not increase it more than its max voltage of 4.4V. Third, check if other SIM cards of the same network are getting proper network coverage at the location. If not, change your SIM card or change your location and try again. If even after doing all this, your GSM 800L module doesn't get the intended one blink every 3 seconds, chances are that it is faulty and you should get a new one. If it is working for you, we can move forward with the next step. The AT command test. Let's upload this AT command test program on our Arduino. If you are a reader, you can find all the codes, circuit diagrams and in-depth explanation in the blog linked in the description. Okay, now you can see that we have all the OKs on the serial monitor, which is good and it means our GSM module is responsive and working. If not, check if the connections of RX and TX are correct. Now after AT commands, we are ready to send messages and calls to any number. So let's try it. So here is the message code, which we will upload in the Arduino. 
and we have received the message and now let's upload the calling code and here's our call which means our module is working perfect so i guess that's it for the video hope you liked our troubleshooting video if you did a subscribe would be awesome thank you for watching bye bye